Imagine if this rocket didn't exist. The International Space Station we know wouldn't be here. For 60 years, humans have been flying to space using this rocket design, which hasn't changed much since the Cold War. It's amazing engineering made by a guy who failed at building a nuclear missile first, but then made a rocket that orbits the Earth. That's the story of Russia's Soyuz rocket. The evolution of the Soyuz rocket. The Soyuz rocket traces its origins back to the mid-1950s and the nuclear arms race of the Cold War era. The Soviet Union held a terrifyingly early advantage over the United States, having developed the world's first intercontinental ballistic missile, the R-7. In typical Soviet fashion, the nation's nuclear warheads were excessively large and heavy, weighing in at over 3,000 kg. Consequently, they required an equally robust rocket system to transport them across the ocean to wreak havoc on America. No easy task. Yet, there was one man up for the challenge. Sergei Korolev, one of the founding fathers of human spaceflight and the mastermind behind the Soviet space program's consistent triumphs over the Americans until his untimely death in 1966. Korolev needed a design that would maximize power and efficiency over the longest flight path to reach the United States. To achieve this, the R-7 employed a process known as rocket staging. While the concept of multi-stage rockets dates back to 14th century China, the Soviets took it a step further with parallel rocket staging, a theory developed in 1947 by Mikhail Tikhonravov and implemented for the first time on the R-7. Unlike traditional sequential staging, where rockets are stacked in series, parallel staging involved running them side by side. Korolev's design featured four ejectable Stage 1 side boosters surrounding the Stage 2 core booster. Given that the Earth's atmosphere is densest at lower altitudes and thins out at higher altitudes, maximum thrust was only necessary for the initial leg of the journey. Once this was achieved, the booster engines became redundant dead weight and were jettisoned, a process known as staging. Unlike sequential staging, where the first stage bears the weight of the second stage, parallel staging allowed the second stage engine to burn for the entire ascent, eliminating dead weight. The R7's staging mechanism involved four strap-on boosters, essentially fuel tanks with engines supplying propellant to all five engines at liftoff. Once the outer tanks were depleted, they were ejected, leaving a fifth fuel tank in the center to power the remaining second stage engine until the desired velocity was reached. What set the R7 apart was its elegant booster separation technique. Instead of passively falling away, a burst of gas propelled the boosters outwards in a synchronized backflip maneuver, resulting in a perfect cross formation known as the Korolev cross. Although each booster appeared to contain four engines, this was not the case. The RD-107 engine, along with its close companion, the RD-108, were the brainchildren of Soviet engineer Valentin Glushko. These engines featured one rocket engine, with four separate combustion chambers and nozzles, a design aimed at balancing power and stability, a challenge faced when dealing with larger combustion chambers. Glushko's solution, adopted in the 1950s, proved highly successful. The R7 underwent its first test launch campaign in 1957, successfully placing a payload into space. However, its effectiveness in safely returning the mock warhead was limited, an essential characteristic for a weapon of mass destruction. Additionally, the complex preparation required for launch meant that it took between 8 and 12 hours to get the rocket airborne, a significant delay in the event of a real-world nuclear crisis. Despite its shortcomings as a war machine, the Soviet leadership quickly recognized the R-7's potential as a spacecraft. The Sputnik era pioneering orbital exploration. The initial successful orbital rocket in human history was referred to as Sputnik in the Soviet Union. Despite common misconceptions, Sputnik in Russian simply means satellite, encompassing both artificial and natural orbiting bodies, including a planet's moon. The Sputnik rocket, essentially an R-7 missile with a payload fairing instead of a nuclear warhead, housed a polished metal sphere with four radio antennas. On October 4, 1957, Sputnik 1 achieved low Earth orbit, marking the onset of the space race. While the Americans scrambled to catch up, the Soviets maintained a rapid pace. Sputnik 2, launched on November 3, 1957, carried the unfortunate dog Laika, the first living being from Earth to enter outer space, albeit tragically also becoming the first Earthling to perish there. Sputnik 3, launched in May 1958, deployed Object D into orbit, reaching heights of 1,158 miles above the surface. Following this, 
the Sputnik R7 underwent upgrades, including a third stage equipped with a smaller engine, enabling missions to the moon. Lunar 1, launched on January 2, 1959, aimed to be the first lunar impact, though it missed. Nonetheless, it became the first human-made object to venture beyond Earth's orbit. Later in 1959, Luna 2 accomplished the first intentional lunar impact followed by Luna 3, which captured the first ever photograph of the Moon's far side. The Vostok program's historic milestone. Sergei Korolev and his team had undoubtedly achieved remarkable milestones in their initial two years of space exploration through the continuous enhancement of the R7 rocket design. However, this was just the beginning. In 1960, the commencement of the Vostok program signaled the Soviet Union's earnest endeavor to send a human into space. The Vostok rocket, utilizing the same R7 booster, but with an extended third stage for increased fuel capacity and a more potent engine to handle payloads of up to four metric tons, represented a significant advancement. The primary payload was a compact crew capsule, its design inspired by the Zenit spy satellite. On April 12, 1961, Yuri Gagarin made history by riding a Vostok rocket, becoming the first human to venture into space and orbit the Earth. It's important to emphasize the remarkable speed at which Korolev and his team advanced the Soviet rocket program by the late 1960s. They had already developed an interplanetary version of the R-7 rocket, named Molnia, meaning lightning. While the core stage and side boosters remained unchanged from the R-7 design, the third stage received upgrades, featuring a more potent quad combustion chamber engine similar to the booster engines, but adjusted for better performance in space's vacuum. Additionally, a new fourth stage was added to the R-7, equipped with a closed-cycle rocket engine capable of restarts in space. This advancement enabled payloads to reach Mars or Venus transfer orbits. Between 1960 and 1965, Molnia rockets launched several probes and landers toward Mars, Venus and the Moon. Despite none fully achieving their objectives, they gathered valuable data. Notably, Venera 3 became the first human-made object to reach Venus but lost contact with Earth before impact. The legacy of the Soyuz rocket program. In 1966, a significant moment unfolded for the Soviet space program. This year marked the initiation of the Soyuz rocket program. Alongside the unfortunate passing of Sergei Korolev, the Soyuz spacecraft, designed for advanced Soviet space exploration, boasted enhanced capabilities and size compared to previous crew capsules. Comprising three primary segments, an orbital module with docking ports, an aerodynamic re-entry module, and a service module housing power and propulsion systems. The Soyuz enabled extended low-Earth orbit missions, spacecraft docking, and even lunar flybys, though this was only conceptually seed not attempted. Utilizing the familiar R7 booster configuration from prior missions, the Soyuz underwent initial trials, encountering several setbacks, including failed uncrewed test flights and tragic accidents during manned launches. Despite these challenges, the Soviets proceeded with crewed missions, notably resulting in the unfortunate demise of Vladimir Komarov due to technical malfunctions. This era signaled a turning point for Soviet space endeavors. While initially ahead with the R-7 design, they faced increasing competition from the American Gemini and Apollo programs. Nevertheless, the Soviets persisted, refining the Soyuz into a reliable means of transporting crew to low Earth orbit. By 1973, the Soyuz U variant featuring enhanced engine power, emerged as a stalwart workhorse serving for over four decades until retirement in 2017. During its peak production years, the Soviet Union utilized Soyuz rockets to develop various space stations, including the iconic Mir, and contributing to the International Space Station. Soyuz remained instrumental as the primary means of crew transport to the ISS, uh, maintaining its status as the most utilized space vehicle in history with over 1,900 launches. Despite incremental upgrades, the Soyuz 2 variant largely retains the original R-7 design, showcasing Russia's enduring prowess in spaceflight. However, recent years have seen strained relations between Russia and Western nations, marking a departure from the long-standing cooperation that characterized Soyuz missions. Thanks for watching.